You're like a cat back there. How do you get your feet like that? How do you get to be so light on your feet, so quick on your feet? What do you do training like to get like that? guys, Coach Batten, YouGoProBaseball.com here again with Kyle Schmidt, current professional catcher in the Twins organization. And we're going to talk about in this video, transfer and throwing drills, exercise, whatever you want to call it, to be better, more consistent and have a faster pop down. That's what's going to happen yeah. if you get good at this stuff, right? You're going to get it. You drop your pop. You're going to be a better catcher. Mm -hmm. So what do you got for us? I know you like to train small. We did a video when uh -huh. we were in Leander, Texas. Shout out 180 Performance Center. And that was a great video. It blew up. And we're going to talk about some of the stuff that we talked about, but we're gonna elaborate because you kind of took that and started expanding that drill set a little mm -hmm. bit more. Tell us about it. Absolutely. So yeah, what we did then, and I know it was a little bit, you know, let's get this done and let's go through some stuff while you're here working. Wanted to expand on that a little bit today. So you can see I've got my handy dandy web glove again. I believe those are available on your site, right? Yes, sir. So I love these things for both receiving fields. My partner at KGS, Kyle Gray, we're both Kyle, it makes it really easy. He likes using these for infield work, whether it be working through the ball on the ground, work, whether it be transfers working around a bag. And I've actually started using these for transfers behind the plate because we're focusing on that pocket. It's so small, we've got to make sure that we catch it there. Whenever we get to our glove, it just makes it that much easier. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to have John just flip me some of those mini wiffle balls. And I know that it's a windy day down here in Florida, so we'll see if these bounce all over the place. But I'm going to go ahead and just start on my knees, just like we did in the blocking video. And all I'm going to do is whenever he throws it in, I'm going to catch that and just get it out. So this doesn't necessarily have to be super quick and super fast. You don't have to get a four seam grip on these mini wiffle balls, but we're just trying to get them in the glove and then get them out. If we don't focus, like I'm not doing right now, on that pocket itself, we're not gonna be able to catch that ball. So we're taking that little step, which can be challenging, and add that into our transfer work. Focus on that pocket. There it is. We go one more. So from there, you can do that out of your machine. If you have one of the personal pitchers, which are also available on your side, I believe, you can work that. It's gonna be a little bit more consistent when you're indoors with the wind out here, it's blowing these little balls around. So maybe a little more challenging. I think that's a great little tool. You can do as many reps as you want there. You can build into where whenever we're in our secondary, ready to go, you're working on catching that ball and getting out of position to be ready to throw. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna to move to one of the Valley Mall trainers here and we're gonna go regular baseballs. So I'm gonna get back down on my knees and I'm gonna have John just throw these balls in there it can be anywhere from underhand flips at a few feet to backing it up all the way to out of a machine, out of a live arm, whatever you want to do. But we're going to get in that nice, comfortable position on our knees. We're going to catch that ball and just separate here. That's all we're going to do. So wherever that ball is, we're reacting and we're getting that ball out. Notice every time I'm trying to get a four seam grip on a ball or as close to a four seam grip on that ball as I can. So I'm ready to throw that down to second because as catchers, we don't want to throw two seams or cutters or change ups to our middle infielders or to our third baseman. We wanna make sure that that ball has lots of carry and life through our target. Another variation you can do of this drill that I'm gonna do now is where we catch it and we just turn it to the ear. So a lot of things that I like to say to guys is if I'm gonna run from here to one of the other backfields over there, what's the quickest way to get there? And a lot of guys will very simply say straight line. And so I tell them whenever we're transferring, we don't want those long movements with our glove up to our throwing position. We wanna have a nice direct path in what we call our midline across our chest, out in front of our chest, back up to our ear. So that's all we're working on with this variation where we're working nice and quick and smooth back to that ear while we're isolating the rest of the body. And then from there, go back into that transfer, trying to get that four seam grip wherever that ball is. As a tosser, should I be moving this around the zone? You absolutely can. You absolutely can. I think it's really hard for guys too, whenever that ball's down here, to not push that ball underneath and come up. So if we can work being really direct, if you want to throw that ball at the bottom, up to the top, and not pushing that ball around to get back up here, being nice, and direct and smooth. So I think that that's a really good drill that you can use because it's very simple, it's very low intensity. You can do that off the machine to get ready to go. You can see that velo. If you have somebody that's throwing to you a little bit harder, you can do that too. Next one I wanna do is we're gonna jump into our stance now. And I've seen this one out there. I don't have a specific name for it, but I like to call it the flamingo drill because what we're doing is we're gonna get up and pause while we're working through our transfer and our footwork. And we're gonna make sure that we get stacked on our backside 
and then get off of it and gain ground. So whenever I say gaining ground, that just means getting our momentum going through our target. That doesn't necessarily mean jumping out in front of the plate or like jumping off of our backside, our right leg, just making sure that we don't lose ground away from our target and we create momentum towards our target. So all we're gonna do here is I'm gonna get set up. I'll start on two feet in my secondary and I'm gonna be really quick to my right foot and then I'm gonna settle into that front side. So feeling that weight shift happen from when I'm back here into my front foot strike and getting in that nice strong throwing position. Do that again, right knee down. And we're just settling into that front side. If you notice where I started, I was about right here and my front foot ended up about right here. So I didn't jump forward, I didn't gain too much ground, but I just got my body moving that way. So you can hit your reps there, you can keep going to feel that weight get stacked here and then get off of it. And then from there, we can do the same thing where we're basically speeding up that process, but we're still controlling our move forward. So whenever we do this, we're gonna be really quick to our right foot, but then we're gonna slow it down, make sure our feet get in line with our target, just like you would do if you were working like a T drill or something where you're trying to get from that stance where our toes are pointed towards second to being in line with our target as we get ready to throw. After we do that, then we can work into our regular transfers where we're speeding up and we're going as quick as we can go, getting through our target. Make sure we gain ground, make sure we're really consistent. Staying low, not coming up too tall and making sure that footwork is good to all bases. If we're going to third base, making sure we're taking that little drop step, clearing that hitter. And if we're going to first base, making sure our feet are getting in line with our target as we're ready to throw. You're like a cat back there. How do you get your feet like that? How do you get to be so light on your feet, so quick on your feet? What do you do training wise to get like that? So I think that that's a really good question because we work so much on our footwork and actually on the field or in the cage working on that technique, but it's hard for us to feel what it's like to be light and be quick if we don't put in the work elsewhere and we're not just working catching. So something I did in high school and college, I would do like dot hops, line hops, ladder drills, and a lot of jump rope. Can you explain dot hop? I never so heard that's that. essentially what we had, it was a mat and we had one dot in the middle and then you had four corners around that. And so you're doing one foot hops, different patterns, working around doing different things. Okay. Just trying to feel like I'm gonna land, I'm gonna redirect, I'm gonna go somewhere else, I'm gonna stay light and quick on my feet. Very cool, very cool. And jump rope, jump rope, jump rope. Now people think, or at least I have the perception that people think that to have a faster pop time, that you have to have a strong arm. Would you say that your arm strength or your arm speed, your throwing velocity plays more of a role in having a better pop time or your technique here and the quickness of your transfer, getting the ball from your glove to your hand? Is it a combination of both or what? Is there more importance in one versus the other? I, th I think there's definitely a combination of both at play. If, if you throw 88, 90 miles an hour down to second, you've got a cannon and you're able to let that work for you. If we can get rid of the ball quicker from there, if we have better footwork, if we have a more efficient delivery, then that 88 is just gonna help you because that ball's gonna be flying quicker. But I think the average arm velo for catchers in the big leagues was, it might be up to like 80 now, but I think it was 79 point something in years past. So we're not necessarily throwing that ball that hard down there, but we backspin that ball so well, we get our feet underneath us so quick and we get rid of the ball really quick. And that's what gives that perception of that ball coming out really fast. What, what are you trying to do? Like when you see your, the guy running, obviously you're anticipating him going and you're ready to go. Like, what are you thinking about? What's your thought process? And like, where are you trying to throw that ball? So whenever I see him go, like the little competitor inside me takes over and goes like, no, you're not gonna steal that bag. And that's just me whenever I'm playing. I love throwing guys out. It's one of my favorite feelings on the field. Like I love receiving the ball, but I also love getting that guy off the bases. Cause like we've talked about, it helps the pitcher, it helps our team, but also inside, like I throw a guy out, especially to end the inning. And I run off the field going like, man, that feels really good. As far as where I'm trying to throw it, I want to miss low into the right side of second base. So if we're, let's flip the field here. If I'm in middle infielder and I'm setting up out in front of the bag to receive that throw, I don't want that throw to be up here or up here or out here if I can help it. Obviously some throws are going to be there, but I want that throw to be somewhere in here. So that way I can get down, receive that ball as I'm tagging and apply that tag to the runner as he's coming in. So as a catcher, if we flip the field again, I wanna miss just on the right side of that bag and I wanna give that guy a good throw to make that tag with. So think like Javi Baez where he knows that ball's gonna be right here and he doesn't even look at it, he just catches it and puts it down. And those guys are really good at doing that. But if we give them the best opportunity to be able to make that quick tag and put that down, that's also gonna help our throwout percentage, gonna help our pop time because that ball's gonna be consistent right in here. And that's also gonna help us with our team and making sure that runners get off the bases whenever we have an opportunity to. We made a video before talking about blocking and one of the drills that you did used a band. Is there any band stuff that you're doing for this? 
Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> How convenient. So like we did in the blocking video, we're gonna put this around my waist. All we're doing here is trying to feel explosive out of the bottom of our crouch or our one knee setup, whichever we decide to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed this around my waist. You can stand behind me again, and I'm gonna have you hold that band pretty tight. Okay. So I'm gonna show first on two feet where I'm in my secondary. So I jump from my sign giving position into my secondary, and then from there, you can do this dry. You can do that with balls coming at you but I'm gonna work against that band and make sure that I get from this position to this position, or at least pretty close to it. I wanna make sure that my left knee starts to get that momentum going into the throw, and then I'm gonna work against it, and I'm gonna hold that position once I get out there and make sure that that band doesn't pull my weight one way or the other. When we go from a right knee down, same thing. I'm gonna let that knee start that momentum drive and then I'm gonna work there. And we're just trying to work on being explosive and get through it quick. If I try to go a little faster, I'm set up. And then I'm to my feet as quick as I can be, trying to get those feet as in line as possible. I'm just thinking from the coach's perspective, if you, cause you, you're probably not gonna have two coaches per one catcher. Uh -huh. So you could clip it to a fence if you have the ability to clip it to a fence or tie oh, it yeah. to a fence, something like that. Or if you're working in groups, maybe have the other catcher you know, taking turns, one behind them, holding them, something like that. So something that I've done with guys whenever I'm working with more than one catcher at a time, I'll go ahead and feed the band around the guy who's transferring to throw, and then I'll also put it around the waist of somebody else, and I'll have them face one way or the other and get them in a squat. So if they're facing away from the guy that's throwing, and then they go into their transfer sequence, and their transfer move through the ball, that band's pulling on them, and they've got to work on their stability and holding that position while they're in a crouch. A lot of times we'll get them in like a wide secondary. So that way when that band pulls, which they don't know when that's gonna happen, they've gotta make sure that they're stable and ready to go. They're not getting pulled back this way out of position. I love that. Two birds with one stone. Two catchers with one band. <laughs> there we go. Very cool stuff. We made a lot of videos today. We talked about the whole one knee down, how the setup should be. We talked about proving your pop time in this video. We talked about blocking, blocking drills. We talked about the whole way to receive the baseball. We talked about a ton of stuff, but this was just a small piece of some of the stuff that you're gonna see on KGSbaseball.com. So be sure to go check them out. The link's in the description down below. Also on Instagram, at KGSbaseball. So check them out, really great stuff. Thank you so much for all the information. Yes, sir, thank you. Hope you guys liked it. Comment below, let us know what you're working on, what you're trying to do. And if you're a coach, catching coach, catcher, trying to be better at catching, anything baseball related, make sure you're subscribed to Yugo Pro Baseball with the bell turned on. This way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. This way you're one of the first to see it and you can improve your game quickly. Thank you for all the great information. Oh, I appreciate you, man. This is fun. We'll see you guys in the next video.